Hello, welcome to this video tutorial series on Halion 6, Steinberg's flagship monster sampler workstation everything VST. This thing is ridiculously deep, ridiculously um, powerful, but also intimidating. I mean, just look at it. it it's, it's not the prettiest but it's worth the effort uh, it really is a fantastic tool so over the course of this video tutorial series i'm just going to break it down bit by bit and we'll pick away at all of the functionality inside it and hopefully we'll see that there's nothing in there that's too terrifying there's just a lot of it today we're going to deal with just the interface because that itself can be overwhelming there are so many window configuration options available to you that it's really easy to just get lost. Today we're going to just have a look at how we actually make the program look the way we want it to and if you've never used this thing before don't worry about getting your perfect setup on day one just use the default straight out of the box they're called screen sets and they're accessed from this little button here and these are your standard screen sets you can see Anthony standard is mine but if you pick default Halion library, I think it's just default if you haven't defined your own um, default, then this is what you'll get. You have the option, as you configure these things, as you'll see, eventually you can get to the point where you set your default screen set and that's where you'll get this, this user option. And then when you pick that, that will make it look the way I want it to. So how do we go about that? Well, each one of these panels can contain any number of sub panels and or tabs. So this panel over here, for instance, at the moment is a slot rack. And for the purposes of today's tutorial, we're not worrying about individual components or functionality. We're just looking at uh, the interface itself. So we can uh, create new tabs. And when we click this create tab button, you see here it comes up with select and then all of these are the various components that you can add to any of these panels. So every single one of these panels that you see and every single one of these tabs inside the panels is one of these objects. You can track them down and find out which component is where in the default setup. So if for instance we add a browser to this panel, now we have, there's our original slot rack, that's how it looked but now we've got this second tab as well. Keep going. Add a media bay module, which is the same as this module over here, you see? They're both exactly the same. You can have any number of these modules in any number of configurations. There's absolutely nothing stopping you adding multiple objects of the same type. You know, that the, there really is like no limit here. Each one of these tabs can be split up itself. So if I right click on the tab, it the, the actual tab, not the panel, and split it, what you see is this now says splitter because we've created two new panels on top of each other as we split horizontally. Here is the browser from our original selection because we chose to split a tab up and underneath we haven't yet added anything to this panel down below so if we make that a zone editor we've got a zone editor in the bottom a browser in the top and this where it's uh, given us the default text of splitter needs to be renamed and we'll call it let's say browser zone okay so now when we click the browser zone tab, we open those two panels and we can see our browser and zone panels inside. So when you when you split a tab, it doesn't know what that family of panels is going to be called. So it just gives you the default word of splitter. A little bit confusing when you first see it because you think, where's my, where's my original data gone and why have you called a tab called splitter? I can't see that anywhere. That's what it's done. Close all that and we throw all of those panels away. Both of the browser and the zone are now gone because they were all inside that family tab. 
down here. This is a trigger pad module. If we wanted to add a new C trigger pads, if we wanted to add a new tab to it, we can, no problem. Let's add a, a mixer. It's those two. Split the mixer up vertically. So now here is the mixer on the left hand side of the split. Here is the program tree on the right hand side of the split. And we rename this to mixer prog. Okay. So you can just, as you can see, go on forever. But my, my standard setup is actually pretty similar to what they give you out of the box. This, this default um, screen set uh, is pretty good. So let's make uh, one more small change just to make it look kind of slightly non-standard. We'll create a sample editor over here. And they say, let, we're happy with our screen set now. We've configured all the window sizes. We've configured the overall size of the application itself to what we want as a default. We now save the screen set, call it example. And here it is. So now if we jump away, we've thrown our sample panel away that we created and that at, a, at any time we can go back to our example and there it is back again and also the size of the application itself changes. Now then, this is the main Halion interface and our primary screen set. Get back to the default. But you can have any number of sub windows open at any time and they're all live, they're all active. So if for instance, when we get um, into some of our sound design tutorials later, when we're working with the wavetable, we might have a wavetable and browser editor. Now this is completely independent from the main application, but still fully functional. And all of the functionality in here will tie back to our primary kind of parent application. And we can have any number of these things open at any time and they're all active. And they've all got the same panel design features that the parent application does. So talk about, you know, rabbit hole central. It just goes on forever. Just bear in mind that all of these tabs are all just modules that are plugged together in a way that's going to hopefully be the most useful to you and it's completely configurable and you can save any number of these screen sets so as we go along and you think i like that panel um anthony doesn't have one of those but i want one then you can you can build these things to your own um to your own taste if you want to move a tab from one place to another you can if you hold the shift key down pick the tab up and now you see it walking around drop it there and finally if you want to replace one editor with another that's really easy just go into the editors option pick a new one and now that's a recorder don't forget no data is ever lost when you're configuring these editor screens if you delete a panel or you know throw an entire thing away it's only a, like a skin on top of the engine. You're never losing data by us deleting our slot rack. We haven't permanently lost the ability to access a slot rack. We've not lost all of our slots. It's just the view of it that's disappeared and we can quite easily bring it back. And we've still got exactly the same view we had previously. So it's one of those situations where they've almost giving you too many options it's it's almost too overwhelming initially to, to to get your head around basically try not to worry about it if you stick to the default screen 
Um, that's where I'll stay for the time being until we start understanding how the interface can be configured a little bit more and we'll learn what all of these functions do and there's nothing in, there's nothing too difficult or intimidating in any of the individual pages it's it's the 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 holistic impression the application gives you that can be a little bit overwhelming so that's our quick introduction of the user interface done uh, i hope you found that useful and i'll hope to see you next time thanks very much for watching